setting up the building first uh, thing you do is you draw a mission card if it calls for a special room add it to the building during setup so we will draw a card it's called a splinter in your mind it says locate and destroy the server insertion point entrance so let me explain a couple things right off the bat um, you're thinking what in the world I don't remember seeing an entrance if I can find the tile elevator entrance so we're going to use uh, the entrance instead of the elevator um, next thing we want to do is we want to destroy the server the server is a token this as well and uh, that's a server so we know we're going to have to put these in the building those are the only specific instructions as far as um, the mission um, let's look at it uh, so our objective is to locate and destroy the server the insertion point is the entrance and then we're going to deal with this after we set up the building but at this point we can set up the building so we'll continue to follow instructions it says players can create a custom layout or use one of the suggested layouts at our website and those will be up when the game is in your hands the orange and white circles do not need to face uniform direction. Only three rules need to be followed. The corner tiles must be placed in the corners, and we'll do that. And all rooms must have an entry point and be within one area, diagonal or orthogonally to a hallway. And every building must have an entrance slash elevator tile. It's going to have the entrance tile, so that's no problem. So here's a quick and easy way to kind of shortcut the uh, frame. You know the frame has four corners, and those corners have unique elements. Sorry about the stickiness of the stand here. So I know I can put those in the corners and then I just have to match. So I know this is the reinforcement track. Uh, this is the priority track. This doesn't have something, doesn't have something. We know this is the casualty track. And we know this is the security track, so. So at this point, we only need to set up the things that kind of connect it. We're going to do this, and we're going to do this, which means I know this blank is going to be on the other side. Burst here. And the other burst. So, when you have the frame set up, all of the informational things will be in the corner and they'll be complete. And then you'll have opposites. So, blanks, opposite blanks and bursts, opposite bursts. And that's, that's how you set up the frame. Uh, and per the instructions already that I've read, we know we want to put corners first. Corners are the only 4 by 4s right? At this point, it doesn't necessarily matter. So I'm going to put these two with the halls facing in. And just for the, the giggles of it, I'm going to put this with the hall facing out. And this will be hall in. So we know those are our, our, our foundation, if you will, for the, the, the building. We know that. So the next part is um, an aesthetic. Just so you know, the tiles are double-sided, right? Boom. This technically represents the Waza side and this the Kimvar side. I can mix it up. I can mix and match CCC, EU, Kimvar. Um, the, the easy tell is the, is the hallway. So note the hallway, hallway, hallway for Waza hallway for Waza. So you could set it up like this. I just prefer the aesthetic where it's all kind of the same hallway. Uh, just so you know that's what we're going to be doing. So the next thing to set up is um, in this case we know we need an entrance so we're going to put the entrance in. Now um, the entrance 
like any regular building so just think about any building you've been to enter the building it has to be from the outside so um, the entrance is going to go on an edge um, an elevator can go anywhere and I, I guess technically you could put the entrance in the middle it was just seemed really odd so there'd be no way to get into the floor so we're just going to go ahead and put this entrance in um, we can put it right here if we want to we can kind of do whatever we want uh, to a certain point as long as we meet those certain requirements of course we can also just add a hallway and then the entrance Right, and because you know all entrances have bathrooms near them, we're going to go ahead and put a bathroom right there. So that takes care of have one side. Now we just have to make a couple decisions, but every decision from this point on is an aesthetic decision until we break certain rules, like the hallway rule. Once again, purely aesthetic. I want to put a bathroom on the other side of the building. There's the bathroom, so I'm going to put a bathroom right there. It's basically the exact opposite, and why do I do that? Because I don't want these people to have to walk all the way across the building to go to the bathroom. I know that seems silly, but, <laughs> you know, if you've ever had to do that, you're like, why didn't they put a bathroom closer? It also will probably make the game much more enjoyable in time. Also, I'm, so I'm going to have to decide what to do with this large building. Um, I'm going to put it here, I think. Uh, so I need to connect the hallway to it. Um, Let's go ahead and grab a single, one with a trash can. <laughs> that kind of stuff doesn't matter, but you notice I'm not really caring about where the orange and the whites are. This spot seems like a good spot for a stair, so I'll go ahead and put a stair in there. Um, and once again, uh, with the bathrooms and the stairs, I tend to put stairs and bathrooms opposite each other, so I'll probably end up putting a stair here and have to deal with it momentarily. Uh, if this is a hallway, we uh, need a hallway the rest of the way, so I'll take one of these three because it fits perfect. Boom. And so now our heroes are, uh, I'm sorry, a little bit myth there. Uh, our mercs can come in the entrance, and there's a nice hallway to get to all the places we need to get to. Um, how do I get here? Uh, probably a hallway, so we'll go ahead and put a hallway section here. Once again, I'm just thinking out loud and putting stuff where I, I want to put them. Um, makes sense to have uh, offices there. I have these triple threes here I need to put somewhere um, as I keep moving it, I apologize. Um, it makes sense to put them right here. There will be offices in the middle. See if this works. If it doesn't work we'll, we'll fix it which means we need a hallway over here so I can grab a triple So we can already tell that our office is starting to form pretty, pretty nice. I'm going to have to deal with a lot of these single rooms um, and a double room. I also have a triple hallway still, so there's certainly things I'm going to have to deal with. What I can do right away, though, is say, okay, this is going to be a hallway. It needs to be. It doesn't have to be, but it's going to be. All right? So that leaves us a... Uh, situation where this looks like a four we can do a hallway right there Let's put the planters in such a way that they whoever put this planter here really made a mistake I think <laughs> uh, put this hallway there we'll need another hallway here and you can kind of start to see what I tend to do is I'll get my corners I'll decide where my my big room is going to be and how so the entrance or the elevator and, th and then I just start putting in hallways basically the hallway is going to keep me safe from uh, that second rule which is all rooms must have an entry point and be within one area diagonally or orthogonally of a hallway at this point every room is going to be I already know that so I can just place stuff wherever I want to place them Each other. now I put these in based off of visual, but then I look, okay, wait a minute, the door's here. So I need to pick this up and put it so that there's an entrance. The door is here. So I need to fix that as well. Door here, door here. Basically, after you put a tile in just to see if the see if the doors make sense. Um, clearly they have a lot of it. There's a bio lab here, the bio lab definitely needs to be in. 
Let me put it right there. And we have a couple offices next to the next to it. Now I have a t double here I could have used, uh, but you can tell I don't necessarily need to. So I could take this out and put the double in if I wanted more offices, or if I want to kind of just use singles. We put uh, there's a, two extra singles, and we just created a room, and I basically just did it off of asking questions. So this is going to be my room, now my building. I could set this up completely different, play the same mission, and it would play out differently. So now I have some some um, tokens out here. The next step it says is to place the security level counter on the zero location of the security track so I'll go ahead and zoom and show you what so there it be All right come back down here because I want to talk about something you know <laughs> for good or ill we we allow a lot of flexibility we have uh, two door tokens um, on the punch board so if I wanted to, um, I could put a door. I could I can make a door. So uh, let's look at this area right here. I don't have to. But I could easily put a door here. I know the art uh, doesn't make sense at this point, but if I wanted there to be a door there, because I think there'd be three entrances to this lab, I can do that. And that, that door is a legal, real door. Next says, it says place agent disks regardless of how the building is set up. Uh, there are specific locations with agent placement indicators. Place agent disks onto these locations making sure to match each color. Now this is where we just get in here. And that's what we're talking about right there. See? This right here. And... that right there so you're looking for a little icon in the corner not to be confused with art <laughs> we went through um, and those circles where things are placed they're just uh, the, those circles where agent discs are placed they're just they're just the color there's no particular art with them you know, this is probably more discs than I need but I know this gets a black I know this gets a blue. This is the extraction point token. Um, there are several missions. By several I mean probably three quarters that at a certain point it tells us to go to the extraction point and it tells us where to place the extraction point. That's when we would place this. So if it says place the extraction point in the entrance that means we have to get back to this point. Um, so we're just going to keep this off to the side. The next is the automatic security increase token. So if you've done something as described in the book that automatically increases the security um, for instance placing a certain number of collateral damage discs what you're going to do is you're going to put that security token in the casualty pool and it basically says guess what it's going up so we're going to put that to the side I will have uh, extra agent tokens and I will need them so don't worry about it so I've set up the building and it says mix up the server, so I have the server, with three other objective markers. So I'm going to do the open terminal, the power core, and the safe. You're thinking it doesn't matter. Uh, technically, no, as long as you have the server in there uh, per the instructions. However, uh, the rest of these locations can be interacted with, and they do gain you things. Um, so, you know, if you want to game the system you can uh, figure out what those things are they're on the back of the book so for instance a power core uh, the merc that interacts with this location performs the reload action for free nothing here is major so it doesn't really matter too much it's just like an extra little bonus and in some cases you'll probably need them so I'm gonna flip these down to the question mark side up and I'm gonna mix them up and then it says um, randomly, so the instructions are mix up the server objective with three other objective markers, which I've done. Uh, randomly place the objectives question mark side up into four named areas. So I'm just going to pick the named areas. We suggest um, 
unofficially that if you fail a mission that you don't maintain the same room that you mix it up because if you maintain the same room in the same position you kind of know where everything is all right let's talk about the player board uh, step two is setting up the player board each player, player receives a merc miniature I'm not, they're locked up so i'm not going to pull one out the matching player board and uh, the miniature matches the image so if i'm playing the daimyo the image will match the daimyo each player receives five counters in the color of their choice so I'm just gonna deal with this one and I'll do the rest of them later uh, place a counter on the dark circle on the command point track and attack track so here and here I'm gonna put a bullet here and we're gonna put a CP counter here uh, this is on page three so you know exactly which counters uh, place a counter on the blood track Shows you which ones. Um, you will place your helmet on the number equal to his or her starting priority. This is the starting priority, so I will put this on a number three. And I'm probably going to do this with all of them, and then I'm going to talk about these tokens down here. This token is the reserve action token, so when I take a reserve action, I'm going to put it on that particular board. All right. So the player boards are set up, and let's assume we have our miniatures. This is the priority track, right? So I have placed like-minded colors to those positions. What these do, the one, two, three, four, five, is they determine, they are an indicator of player order. Uh, these will change based off priority, and they will but they don't change within a round. They only change when the instructions say so. So in this case, the daimyo will be the first player. Um, these two get to choose. So we'll just give the wrench number two to make it easy. The heavy number three. Green number four. And orange number five. Now you're saying, why does that matter? Well, it matters for this reason. If they take the duck and cover action, their priorities are going to be changing uh, in, in, in the round. Um, but their order in which they have gone maintains. And so if someone manipulates your priorities so you go down and you've already gone, you don't get to go again. Um, the daimyo is going to go first, going to do every action he wants to do, as many as his CP allow. The wrench will do the same followed by the heavy, then the spy, then the pathfinder. Then we calculate security, we calculate priority. We're going to do gameplay videos next. But this is how you set up the player boards. So uh, this is the building. We're playing Waza, and we're going to play that mission. Uh, splinter in your mind. Um, uh, the last thing I guess I should talk about are the other tokens involved that you haven't seen, which would be the blood tokens. There's a one, there's a two, and there's a three. So. Should, it's it's to keep track of damage on security force. All right. So we'll have to get the. Uh... No, the baggies don't come <laughs> with the game, but uh, it's kind of ready to go. So the game board itself is about just at twenty nine. Oops. 29 inches. And it should be a square, so. Yeah, 29 inches or 2 feet 5 inches. Um, and if I haven't said it, I know this is the same tile. Obviously, it's not warping after, over time and it still fits fantastic. We're very, very pleased with how uh, this has turned out. Um, the table, we'll probably put out the leaves, but this is a 3 foot table. Um, and if we put all the mercs uh, on two sides, we could probably play and it wouldn't be a problem. 